Hello everybody and welcome to the video. So in today's video, we are going to see how to become a research scientist after your MSc in biotechnology. So what are the different steps that you must follow in order to become a research scientist? If at all you are uh, pursuing your MSc or you are an MSc pass out, then what are the different steps that you must follow in order to become a research scientist in your career? That's what we are going to see in this particular video. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. So first and foremost, know your area of interest. So especially if you are an MSc student, if you are still pursuing your MSc or if you have passed out your MSc, then turn back and see what is your area of interest, right? So area of interest as in what is the branch in life sciences that you want to take ahead uh, in your research career. So make sure that you have a very clear picture of what that is. So even if you don't have the specifics of it, just have have an idea about which side of uh, biology or life sciences you would want to incline towards, right? So have that fair bit of idea. Secondly, once you have that idea, then research about the methods that are being followed uh, to uh, do this particular research on this particular topic, right? Or this branch. So see what are the different, um, you know, types of researches that's going on. What are the different lab techniques they use for all this? And then see if you're interested in doing all of this. Obviously, in your BS your MSc you have done you would have done your practicals and you would have uh, gotten a hands-on experience about all of these methods like many of these methods so see if you will be interested in pursuing that as a part of your research career so have that uh, kind of concept in mind and then do your MSc or even after you finished your MSc just turn back and look what is it that interested you so that is one and second also research about the scope that is there uh, for any field that you're choosing uh, to become a research scientist, right? So see uh, whether it is an upcoming field, are people talking about it, are people researching about it, or is it all already a very uh, well-established field and there's no more research to do in it? Uh, there'll be no uh, area where there'll be no more research to do in it, but is the scope less? So that is what you'll have to uh, do some research to find all this out. So you can either go for online help or you you can talk to a few scientists who are already uh, in that field or you can talk to your professors, you can talk to your seniors. So try to get all of that network and try to get that particular information about what are the methods that is used in this particular branch of um, uh, in this particular branch of um, life sciences and what is the scope, uh, how does the scope look like, right? So do that particular research. Thirdly, once you have um, fixed uh, uh, fixed an area in which you want to practice or you want to uh, take your research forward, then learn about it as well. So you can do this by doing some internships or uh, you can attend training programs or conferences, expert talks, or you can also uh, see a few videos, online lectures or articles, all of this to learn more about this particular topic. Because when you're going to do research, then uh, you will have time to do all of that. But then the most basics you need to know before you join, uh, in uh, before you start your research career, right? So all of these will help in finding out your area of interest. Next is practice, right? So practice it uh, maybe by joining the industry or um, uh, or a project uh, itself. Like for example, you can join as a project assistant in one particular lab and then try to do all of those, um, you know, techniques and all of those methods and see if you're getting interested out of it and learn those techniques as well, right? So these are the few uh, things that you have to do before you even uh, go ahead as, uh, you know, go ahead for your PhD. Right. So first, know your area of interest. See what are the skill sets that you have. What are the technical skills that you have? What are the communication or the soft skills that you have? What should you develop on? So have an idea about yourself. Analyze about yourself. Analyze about your interests, and then have a clear mind before uh, going into PhD. Right. 
So yes. So the next uh, topic that is the, uh, the next step after you uh, know what your area of interest is is to do your PhD, right? So higher studies is always important uh, if you want to become a scientist. So the first step there after your MSc will be your PhD. So you need to have the uh, you need to have a uh, idea whether you want to do PhD abroad or you want to do it in India. So once you have that clarity and if at all your choice is uh, to do a uh, yeah, PhD in India then the procedure is different if you have to do it in abroad then the procedure is different especially from country to country as well it varies so yes so we'll talk about India uh, in today's video so what are the exams that you you need to give after finishing your MSc to enter into PhD right so there are all of these exams so first is CSI or UGC net that gives a fellowship um, for pursuing PhD in many of the universities and labs second is DBT JR uh, which is again called the BET examination. So that is another uh, choice of examination that you can give and it gives fellowship as well. Next is the GATE examination for pursuing a PhD. Next is the J JGEEBILS which is uh, uh, which, which is being conducted by NCBS TIFR. So that is another exam. So these are the different exams that is conducted from the government side. And you can give all of these exams uh, to get a fellowship in the lab or in the university that you want to uh, do your PhD in. Or uh, there's also another option that is to give university entrance examination. So many universities have their own entrance examinations for PhD. So you can give any of these uh, examinations after you choose, you know, which university you want to enter in. So that is also another um, choice that you have. Apart from these uh, government exams uh, for fellowship, you can also give uh, university specific entrance examinations. Now, once you uh, clear any of these examinations, you can apply for the labs. So how do you decide what lab do you want to apply for? So first of all, it depends on the topic of your interest. So you've already chosen, uh, you know, your area of interest. So you need to do some uh, research about that. You need to see what are the different kinds of researchers that's happening in, uh, you know, uh, in different labs and different universities in the topic of your research. That is, for example, if you want to do it in neurobiology, then what are the different labs in India that does research in neurobiology and what uh, specific area will you be more interested in that is look at all the professors who are working look at their profiles look at the profiles of the lab students as well see their profile what is the kind of work they're doing will you be interested in doing these work do you have the enough skill sets to do this work or are you willing to learn all of the skill sets right so ask these questions uh, to yourself research about the profiles of these uh, professors as well about these research areas as well and once you have a good idea about uh, all of this then you can start applying for these labs with your fellowship in hand either fellowship or the uh, separate entrance exams that you have given so with that score you can start applying to the labs and um, then once you apply uh, to the lab you will be registering as a PhD candidate and you'll pursue your PhD now once you finish your PhD you can um, still work as a research scientist in a few of the universities but most of the universities also require the postdoctoral fellowship right so a postdoctoral fellowship is again uh, seen as an extension of your PhD itself so again here the question comes as to you wanted to do it abroad or you want to do it in India so that one particular question you will have to decide on and once you've decided then uh, you need to again do the research about what are the different labs what are the different researchers that's going on and I'm sure uh, during the postdoc fellowship you will have a better idea about um, you know all of the research research uh, that's going on because in your PhD itself you might have had uh, collaborations with many of these uh, you know professors outside your university and you will also uh, while you're uh, doing your literature review and while you're even uh, performing your experiments right you will have a bit of an idea about this particular research area itself because 
you'll be reading a lot of papers you'll be doing a lot of experiments and you will compare it with uh, what others have done as well so this way you will all constantly be in touch with this particular area and you will have a better understanding about it so yes if uh, after you finish your phd you will have that clarity as to where you want to do your pdf or your postdoctoral fellowship right so once that is decided um, so it is mostly an extension of your phd uh, research area itself so you need to have the lookout for the vacant positions you need to get in touch with the professors out there and then you need to give your uh, proposal your research proposal to them and uh, there should be a match between your professor and you and only then you can pursue your uh, postdoctoral fellowship now apart from the university's fellowship that is available you can also get fellowship uh, from outside so if you are talking about uh, the indian scenario then these are the different different fellowships that is available for pursuing postdoc one is the uh, serb national postdoctoral fellowship second is from the csir third is the fulbright nehru postdoctoral research fellowship next is the igidr postdoctoral fellowship and raman postdoctoral fellowship from iisc right so these are the different these are the few of the uh, fellowships that is available in india for pursuing your postdoc so for pursuing postdoc then doing phd is uh, necessary uh, so this is another research experience that you can gain and most of the universities most of the well uh, renowned lab these days they ask for an experience such an experience such a pdf experience to join as a research scientist so yes after doing your phd you can think about doing your postdoctoral fellowship as well now once you have finished your postdoctoral fellowship as well then you can join any of the uh, research labs which are uh, focused in your uh, area of interest right you can join there as a research scientist and um, so for joining of uh, as a research scientist make sure and just remember this one point that you should be very passionate about research only then you can sustain in this field and you will have that interest and you will have that passion towards your job so you need to have that passion about research and the passion about the uh, subject that you are choosing as well and you will also have um, opportunity to mentor other students so just like how you had mentors in your career journey uh, while you're doing phd or while you're even pursuing your msc you would have had uh, your mentors who helped you out in a few projects so this way you will be mentoring other students when you are a research scientist and this will uh, help you in making a difference so of course you will have that job satisfaction you will have that um, you know uh, that that feeling of goodness when you when you are a research scientist and when you are really passionate about research so this is how this is these are the different steps that you must take in order to become a research scientist so this is quite a long journey uh, a very uh, patient journey so you need a lot of patience uh, to pursue this particular journey but in the end it will all be worth it i wish all the very best for all the students out there who are uh, wanting to become a research scientist in your careers thank you so much and see you all until next video